Sony there? Yeah. Cool, got it, man. Okay. So where you at? I'm in Ohio, in Youngstown, Ohio right now. Oh, Youngstown, okay. So you were in New York then over the weekend. Yeah, and then we went to Pittsburgh, and then we're staying at a friend's in Ohio, and headed to Cleveland tonight. Oh, that's cool. How was, uh, how was New York treating you? New York is fantastic. Yeah? Um, except now I'm broke, but <laughs> besides the fact that it takes all our money, it's fantastic. It's always good shows. It's always kind of the height of the trip. So are you touring with the same lineup as per usual, or do you, do you have new additions on the road right now? Or Well, I have a couple couple guys that have been there the longest, and then sometimes with the drummers, they kind of come. I've got three or four that come in and out. Or Okay. So there's some, some folks that have been here for a lot longer than others, I guess. Right on. So I've been really pumped on the new record. Um, I got an advance of it a month or so ago, and... Um, you know, I've been into you guys for a while, and longtime companion to me was a really nice departure. But this is kind of a, a really excellent return, and stylistically, I think for the sunsets. Um, have you been cool. feeling the same as far as the reception from most people? Yeah, seems to be what people seems. Yeah, seems to be people seem to harmonize with what you said. Now, I read in a recent interview you did your own interview with a psychic uh, named Jessica Lanyadu. Yeah, Jessica Lanyado. Lanyado, okay. She's a she um, does psychic readings in San Francisco. Okay. And you kind of talked to her about death, the afterlife, and obviously it's it's pretty fitting given a lot of the content on Antenna to the Afterworld. And I was wondering if I could ask you a bit about your own beliefs regarding death and the afterlife. Oh, sure. So what? Um, what's kind of your initial fascination with it? Because the lyrical content is is pretty, pretty heavy on the new record. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just it's not in every song, of course. But mm-hmm. I guess there's enough songs on the record that that the record has a bit of a a, a loose theme. But yeah, um, I don't know. I've always been interested in death, <laughs> to right. be honest. And uh, um, you know, my songs aren't macabre. Or, no. or anything, but there uh, there are a lot of lyrics in the past records too that have, that are about death. So it's it's not necessarily new, but um, I don't know. I, I had you know a couple people died and stuff, and I, it, it it wasn't something that made me you know sad or depressed. It was something that made me curious. Mm-hmm. Just about kind of a death. morbid curiosity. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. I guess it's more. I guess. Literally speaking, it's morbid curiosity. Yeah, Mor- morbid kind of comes with the stigma of of uh, negative or something. But right, it was really just a fascination with with all that stuff, and not only the afterlife or the afterworld, but just all those things that uh, are that we have thought of or thought about as humans, but really don't know. Right. Uh, dimensions, you know, other universes, mm-hmm. alien life, all that shit. Right. Um, and as far as my beliefs, I, I kind of believe in everything. Yeah. Uh, although uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye if it turned out that none of it existed either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, it's kind of like I, I, the way I see it is. Like I could see atheists being completely correct, but at the same time, it's such a depressing thought that I tend to want to believe that there's something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do well, you... atheists don't know any more than the people who, the opposite of them. Yeah. Believers. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, as as much as agnosticism is kind of a cop out, it you know makes sense to at least say that you don't really know one way or the other. Yeah, I think I'm an agnostic. Yeah, that that would be me as well. And um, do, uh, how did you? I mean, is this the psychic in San Francisco? Is this just a casual friend of yours, or is it somebody that you kind of seek out for? I don't know, chit chatting often. Uh, she's both. Okay, she, cool. I I I, uh, I was bought a present from my band actually to visit her, mm-hmm. um, and I had no no idea and what to expect. And within the Within the session, she's also a medium. So at, within the session, she said that there was I had a visitor, uh-huh. and would I like to talk to this visitor? And uh, and then she kind of described this visitor, and the description 
pretty much fit this woman that I knew who had died, um, an older woman that I, I wasn't, wasn't uh, incredibly tight with, just um, kind of knew her as a, as a fan, really. Mm-hmm. She kind of followed my work, and, and my band had stayed at her house once uh, on tour. She was in the room with you guys on this uh, recent talk? So yeah, so then I was there. She said, so, so she was like this visitor, and and she, and the and the psychic said, you know, she has some things to impart to you, wants to say to you, basically, and um, she said said something along the lines of, you know, don't be lonely, don't 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 wallow in loneliness, mm-hmm. um, live, because uh, I haven't or I didn't, you know, and and the circumstances of this woman that I knew was that her she had had a son who had uh, committed suicide at a young age. Mm-hmm. And she was very depressed for a couple of years and then died in her sleep, like, about a year and a half later. Okay. Uh, so she didn't, you know, she was completely depressed. And you, if you're a romantic, maybe she, you might think she died of a broken heart or something. Yeah, like yeah, the, exactly. The, um, yeah. stress or the pain was a little too unbearable. But um, so she... So it, it it seems fitting that she might convey a message like that. Now, hey, I, I, it, I have no idea if that stuff is actually happening and if a medium is actually contacting the dead or what's going on. Or, right, right. And I don't profess to, to know anything. And somebody could probably analyze that mm-hmm. uh, moment and break it down and, and, and uh, show it... Um, scientifically what it was and what it wasn't or something. But I I left the, the meeting just being kind of inspired to think about the afterlife right. and the afterworld yeah. because of that, that experience. So that that's, cur- Yeah, it can't hurt for uh, songwriting content there, can it? Yeah, well, it was just, it was really interesting. It was mm-hmm. just really impactful and kind of exciting and and. And, you know, it's not like you walk home and you go, I'm going to write a bunch of songs about this. Right. You just, um, you're kind of excited and interested in something, and then naturally, six months later, you realize that it, it kind of worked its way into what you, you're you working on or something like that. Exactly. And, and the same, you know, and like I said, it's not like every song is about that. So it's... No. It, 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 it all, the, my fascination with that, the afterlife, was just a natural tie-in to, to my fascination in kind of sci-fi, which I've always been a fan of, and science fiction movies. And I grew up with uh, my mom, who was an avid science fiction reader, so there was always science fiction books, you know, around the right. house. And it just all kind of fit, and, and that's how it became this record, you know. Yeah, you know, and one, he, one of the... Even the title was like another... I didn't make that up. A friend of mine was laying down a guitar track for something, and he he, he wasn't happy with it. And he said something like, "You know, I just I, he was he said something like, I need another beer or two for, for my antennas to go into the afterworld on this, you know." And <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Man, can that's that is so beautiful. Can I use that?" <laughs> I was like, "Go ahead, I don't care." That's cool. You know, one of the songs um, uh, lyrically that I enjoy the most would be uh, "Natural Acts." Um, you talk about the graveyard of my youth. I was a freak. I was a dog. And I was kind of wondering, like, who who were you as a kid? I mean, it seems like that's a direct reference to, you know, your adolescence and such. I mean, who who were you when you were younger like that? I don't know. I, I, I don't know who I was. I, I, think I, I think there's a part of me that feels like I was and always have been a bit of a misfit. Mm-hmm. And um, I, would, I would stop short of saying an outcast or something, but I've thought, I was just one of those kids who had that feeling, you know, like uh, in high school, I was a bit of a, one of those kind of stoners who just kind of hung on the fringe just with like two or three people and didn't mix. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and before that, I just, there was some sense for me that I, I was, I wasn't like a sort of a joiner, I guess. Okay. Even though I was on teams and soccer teams and stuff. I, so, you know, sometimes it's, it's not even, how you are, it's kind of how you feel. So, right. Um, I think some of those lines come from those feelings, you know. So what were you listening? Uh, and, and even growing up and being an artist, sometimes I've just felt kind of like a little bit 
within a room, but sort of alone, you know? Right. And a lot, a lot of songs are about being a dog or being from another planet or being a freak. or Right, right. You know, I, I was actually kind of trying to imagine what, what were you listening to when you were a kid? I mean, be it real young or in high school, what kind of stuff were you into? Well, that part of being a kid was incredible for me. I had, I had, a, great, um, I had a great time as a kid. Uh, I had a very, uh, what am I trying to say? I, um, I had an, ex- I had these extreme phases, you know, extreme mm-hmm. that would last maybe eight months, you know? And I, 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 if I was into like, if it was fourth or fifth grade and me and my buddies were all into rat and Motley Crue and Iron Maiden and Def Leppard and we all chose our own band, you know, like yeah. Matt Penwell had rat and Sean McGuire had, Motley Crue, and I had Iron Maiden or something like that. Right, know? right. Um, and then we'd be into it, we'd be so into it, and we'd write it on our, you know, pants or something and stuff like that. We'd write Ozzy on our fingers. And then, like, <laughs> a year later, I'd be into, you know, Thompson Twins or and and all that, like, new wave stuff that happened when I was, you know, uh, of that age. It right. was like, so we had a very distinct year of, Howard Jones and like General Public and Thompson Twins and Frankie goes to Hollywood and we I remember going to all these shows. My mom was a real kind of soccer mom type that brought uh-huh. me and the kids, my friends, to, to that kind of thing. And yeah, then yeah, my parents were the and same. And then like way. a year later, it was like that was over and I was and I was like on a break dance team and I had like a break dance name and then we, we were listening to Nucleus and like. Daft Punk or whatever was, you know, Herbie Hancock's Rocket or whatever. So it was like, it was just going, you know. And then, like, even within those musical phases, I'd be, like, one day, I, you know, I'd be, I have my soccer uniform on and I'd be all, you know, and then the, and within that day I might have my karate uniform on. Or, and then, like, within, and then in between the karate uniform and the soccer uniform, I'd have my little Motley Crue uniform. So, mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I was just one of those kids that was moving through these identity phases all the time, and uh, I don't do that anymore, you know, as my identity. But but artistically, it I, is why I like to sort of move through phases. You know? Yeah, I mean, fa- fa- long time different... companion was a phase right there. I mean, that was, you What's know, that? long time companion was was definitely if you're talking about phases, you know, for the sunsets at least, you know, comparatively speaking, seems like. You were into something right at that time. You did it. Now you're going back to something else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I want. And I once I embarked on it, I really was like, I want it to be like this. I want to have. I want to have a band where the people are. People are like, yeah. Did you ever hear that third record they did? That country record. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's a trip. You know. Right. Right. Uh, you know, we were talking uh, earlier about how yeah, you do have some. Um, some morbid curiosity in your music, but you're also, I think it seems like you're a total romantic, at least in some way. Uh, it comes through in a lot of your songs and their playfulness and so forth. Would you describe yourself as romantic? Yeah, sure, I guess so. I mean, I, I guess I don't really think of myself like that, but sure, I'll mm-hmm. take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. And, um, you know, in general, um, your your musical output is, is really dense, you know, not just with the sunsets, obviously, but your solo work and... Um, you know, I think sometimes it might be hard for your, your average person to imagine um, how that how much time you might spend songwriting. And uh, I'm wondering, is it something you work on day to day? Do you just get in grooves where you're pumping it out? Do you have a routine at all? I mean, how do, how do you usually go about it? No, I don't have any routine at all, and 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 it actually doesn't come out every day or, or anything. It's really just songs kind of are being written in a. Um, in the little moments that we are waiting to do other stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like if I'm waiting on somebody at a coffee shop, I'll just work on, be working on some lyrics. Or if I'm at my house and I got to go do something, but uh, I'll just take a quick five minutes and maybe I'll be, I'll, there'll be something that I want to write down. Right. Um, I don't think I ever work on a song like just sitting down for like two hours until it's done. It's, it's Mm-hmm. It's all very, you know, chopped up little moments that at some point finally materialize. Right. And sometimes quickly and sometimes not, you know. Right, 
Now, um, with, with all the recording you've done, you've obviously worked with a lot of different people over the years. Um, who is there anybody in particular you, you'd love to write songs with that maybe your paths haven't crossed yet that you hope will? Um, no. No, I mean, my mind's open. I, I would be happy to, uh, if anybody reached out or if I met somebody accidentally and something happened, that would be great. But there's no one that I have written down on a list of people that I would like to to know or meet or, right. or or work with. Right. I always thought I would. I I, I don't even think about do, collaborating with other songwriters too often. I have kind of fantasized about collaborating with uh, like a director, a film director, or something oh, to okay. write a uh, screenplay or to write you know music for something. But right, because you've written uh, you've written for the stage before, right? You've written short yeah. short plays. Yeah, I've done just a couple plays and I've done some I just finished a monologue uh, sort of Spalding Gray-esque kind of thing and mm-hmm. um, I've written some plays that became songs and uh, yeah I like I like writing dialogue and and character based stuff so right um, sometimes I'll see a movie and of a director and I'll be kind of excited and want to wonder what it would be like to work with in film but that's cool who are you listening to right now? Like, who who are you hot on? Like, if you're cruising around, what are you listening to? I haven't been listening to anything lately. Uh, I guess that's kind of a disappointing answer. But um, <laughs> there's there hasn't been any music of late that I've been just over and over really glued to and want to hear every day. I was I was um, I've been listening to a lot of stand up comedians. <laughs> oh yeah, like who? Well, um, I'll, uh, there, I may I'll tell you. I, there's a, li- a short list of comedians I downloaded a bunch of their stuff for tour because I realized that fans love to listen to com- comedy in the tour van. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost better than music. So uh, I got some stuff of Maria Bamford and this guy Dan Segura and Louis C.K. and Patrice O'Neill and uh, Hannibal Buress and David Cross. I just made up huge, a bunch of playlists. You know, on my iTunes. So. Yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah, last on time YouTube. I was out, um, we tried Polly Shore just for the sake of it, like late eighties Polly Shore, and um, it was wow, about it was it was about as good. bad as you can possibly imagine it being. Entertaining for a minute, but in the long run, it's hard to get through forty five minutes of nineteen eighty nine Polly Shore. Wow. Yeah, that sounds a little creepy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the scene in San Francisco and the Bay Area in general and how you feel it compares to other spots in the country. Uh, overrated? Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I get asked that a lot, and I I know there's a lot of creative people in San Francisco, but I kind of am under the theory that there's a lot of towns with a lot of uh, real creative people, and I I don't always know why one city gets shine the light on and and others don't you know yeah like, no I, I appreciate the honesty around and yeah there's been times where you know austin is thought of to be this haven for this or detroit is this place for that and not to take away from the pe- the artists of those times when people are saying those cities are great but whenever i go to you know i went to melbourne and i saw all these bands that were just slaying and uh, just as much as when I play a bill in San Francisco, if not more, and mm-hmm. or you know, end up I end up on a bill randomly with some band from Cleveland, and they they're incredible, and you know, I don't know why Cleveland isn't, you know what I mean? I, I don't know yeah. if that's the best example, but no, no, I, I I see you're getting at though. I mean, San Francisco I just, in I general. I don't know why, and and also like. San Francisco gets a lot of attention, but most of the bands in San Francisco live in Oakland. So it's, right, it's, um, exactly. San Francisco is is such a uh, a city of affluence and influence that it's kind of just sucking up the 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 people around it, you know. Right. And um, and uh, there's certainly great artists and bands and from San Francisco because people go there because it is San Francisco and it's kind of a snowball effect just like New York but mm-hmm. uh, beyond that I just think there's, there's great artists in so many places that 
that I always feel weird thinking that San Francisco deserves some sort of extra credit. No, I mean that's a that's a great honest answer. That I, I actually appreciate that. Um, so how how much longer are you guys out on this current stretch? Uh, this is a short one. We just got like five more days or so. Cool. Just gonna Chicago and Detroit and Rock Island and stuff like that. Right on. Well, I'll let you get going, and um, thanks again for playing phone tag with me. I, I appreciate that. Oh, no, I totally understand. Yeah, well, and... I'll uh, see you uh, in July. Yeah, I'll see you in July. I'll probably... I'm going to try and actually make the uh, Oakland show, because I've got a, a show of my own on the 13th, but hopefully I'll see you in Oakland. Right on. All okay. right, mate. Thanks, Sonny. See you, man. Bye.